an example of how to solve a circuit using mesh analysis. So in this example, um, we're going to have three different loops that we're going to use. And that's uh, just noticeable upon inspection. Uh, the first one we could say here is loop one. Okay, and I'm going to assign each loop a current, I1. Call this I2. And call this one I3. I'm free to choose the direction of the loop. Um, and I just chose it this way for ease. Okay, and the next thing we want to do is assign uh, the uh, branch, uh, assign directions for the branch currents. Okay, and that's also something that you can arbitrarily assign. I'm going to assign it like this, and I won't worry about the batteries because I'll assume that the in those branches that the current is traveling in the same direction as the battery. And I don't really care anyway because um, we're applying K. Uh, KVL around these loops. So really what I want to talk about is the voltages. And the voltage in a branch that contains just a battery is just the voltage. Okay, so we'll start by doing uh, KVL at 1. Okay, and I like to start in the lower left hand corner, so I'll do that. And so traveling around, we first enter through the negative terminal of the 1K resistor. Uh, but also keep in mind that our current, I1, is flowing in the, through the negative terminal as well. So this is going to be a negative times a negative, And you actually will just end up with a positive. If that is confusing, you could also think of another current source out here with a current of 0. Okay, and so you would end up with 0 minus I1 if you were to do this. Just another way to think about it. Okay, so this is uh, 1K I1. And uh, now we're coming up through the positive terminal of this resistor, so there'll be a plus here. And we have I1 flowing in to the negative or into the positive side and I2 flowing into the negative side. So it's going to be a 1K times I1 minus I2. Uh, and then next we travel through the positive terminal of the battery and so that's plus 12 equals 0. Okay, And then when we reduce this and put it into standard form we'll end up with 2k i1 minus i2 is equal to 12, negative 12. Next let's do uh, uh, kvl at i2 Okay, and KVL at I2, um, we'll start in the lower left-hand corner. First we go through the negative 6 volts. And then we come down and around and through the negative terminal here of the 1K resistor. And here I3 is entering the positive terminal and I2 is entering the negative terminal. So we have I3 minus I2. And then we uh, come around and we enter through the negative of that resistor there, negative 1K. And I1 is flowing through the positive, minus I2 flowing through the negative terminal. And that brings us back to where we started. So that equals 0. Now let me point out here that this once you've got your second equation done, any place where you have gone through where the loops go through the same branches, it would be not a bad idea to look at your answer. Because remember that this is just a voltage uh, across the branch. And no matter which KVL loop we're doing, they should be the same. 
So here we have 1k and then i1 minus i2. And up here, where we went through the same area, we have 1k i1 minus i2. Okay, so that just, it's an extra chance for you to catch a mistake. Now we'll do KVL at I3. And because I'm a creature of habit, I'll start in the lower left hand corner. So first we go through the negative terminal of the battery. And then we enter the positive terminal of the resistor. And remember, this is I3 minus I2. So it's 1K times I3 minus I2. Here's a chance now to look and make sure I got it right here and there. So in this equation I have the 1k I3 minus I2 and here I have the 1k I3 minus I2. Okay, now moving along, I, I forgot to label this, but based on this um, voltage here we'll label our current the same way. So we're entering through the positive terminal and then we have um, 2k I3 and this equals 0. So finally uh, oh I forgot to put I2 in reduced form so let's put I3 into reduced form and then we'll go back and do I2. So I3 will give us um, minus 1k I2 plus 3k I3 is equal to 12. Okay, and that's uh, that's the standard form. And then uh, if we reduce I2, we'll end up with minus 1k I1 plus 2k I2 minus 1k I3 is equal to 6. Okay, and so now we have our three KVL equations. We have three equations and three unknowns. So we could do a bunch of grubby math uh, using substitution, but why not use um, matrices and then use Mathematica to solve it? And that'll give us another way to solve these kinds of uh, circ of equations. So we're going to put it into this form. Okay, here I'm going to have terms, or the coefficients. So we'll start up with uh, KVL at I1. And for I1 we had 2. And for 2 we had negative 1. And for 3 we have 0. And then over here we get negative 12. Now uh, for 2 we had negative 1, 2, negative 1, 6. And for uh, 3 we get negative, well we get 0 because there is no i1, right? Negative 1 and 3 and this equals 12. And what we're going to be solving for is i1 I2 and I3. Okay, and this isn't really a tutorial on how matrices work, it's just uh, an explanation of how to use matrices to solve this problem. So if you want to know more about it, um, you'll need to do some other, other research. Okay, so now let's take this over into Mathematica and solve it. So when you're solving a system of equations in Mathematica, oh, uh, it's really easy to just uh, create a matrix. And there are two ways to do it. You can use the palette, uh, which is up in the, uh, uh, the main menu of Mathematica here, and open up the basic math assistant. And it will show you under the advanced tab how to create a matrix. There's a quicker way to do this. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign a variable and I'm just going to enclose I'm going to create two parentheses like this and I'll um, use control uh, comma to create 
columns. So I'll do that twice, and then I'll use Control Enter to create the rows. Okay, and now I can just go up and put my data in. So two, negative one, zero, negative one, two, negative one, zero, negative one, and three. Okay, and um, again, not an explanation on matrices here. We need to take the inverse of this. Okay, so I could have thought ahead and put inverse in the front here and then enclose this thing in square brackets, but you can also just use the forward slash forward slash inverse to, um, to invoke uh, the inverse of this. I'm also going to use a semicolon. Semicolon tells Mathematica that we don't want anything output to the console from that first statement. Now we're going to create another matrix and this one will have a single uh, column with that's three rows high. So that's going to be control enter enter and I'll just plug in the known values negative 12, 6, and 12. Okay. And finally what I really want to compute is the dot product. So I forgot to put a semicolon up here because I don't want that to return anything either. What I want to do is compute the dot product. So to do that you just type A period B and it will compute the dot product for you when you hit shift enter. And that is giving us in the order I1, I2, I3 um, the values for I1 and I2 and I3 in this equation. Um, we're, we didn't quite answer the question that we were set out uh, that we set out to solve. Remember that in this we're looking for V naught. Well, once we have I3, uh, all we have to do is multiply I3 times 2K, which brings up an important point. Um, we made a grand assumption when we were setting up this matrix that um, all of these all of our answers were going to be in milliamps and that is because every resistor in the circuit was in uh, was being multiplied by a thousand um, so you can't make that assumption if the circuit has resistors in it that are um, not measured in thousands or thousands of uh, ohms Okay, but in most of the circuits in chapter three, if not all of them, they don't mix and match the types of resistors. So we know that uh, when we multiply, when we get these values, they're in milliamps, and when we multiply the milliamps times this 2k ohm resistor, you will end up with um, uh, 72 over 7 volts. Okay, good luck.